So I can then hit the hold button. I can do that, knock it out of position. It still keeps it on there, so I can re reference it on my other saw. Lock it into position, mm -hmm. we hit the zero button, and it's now zeroed out. Hey, what's up? Barnaby here, so you wanna know more about the general digital T-bevel? Well, I can tell you that it is Popular Mechanics 2011 Editor's Choice Award. It's accurate to within 0.3 degrees, and it's got an eight inch steel blade to it. But what we'd like to do with tools like this is put them into the hands of real people, like Matt oh, Vandalist. Thank you. Yes, yeah, gave it to you, safety side forward. That's right. And you know what? What we're after here, Matt, is you've used it for a bit, and mm -hmm. we want to get your take on its performance, design, quality, and value. And you've got uh, a bit of renown from your basement workshop doings. Explain what you're all about. Okay, well, Matt's Basement Workshop is a podcast. We've been doing it now officially. This is our sixth year at the end of the month. Uh, we do projects where we're building furniture. We're going over joinery techniques. We visit other people. We just do all sorts of stuff. Okay, well, teach me about this tool, because you probably have a tea bevel just in your back pocket most of the day. Um, it's been a few times, yeah, definitely. Yeah, but this one is a digital. So first yeah. of all, let's talk about what you used it for and okay. how it performed in those functions. Okay, well, typically when I'm using a T-bevel, I'm using this to either transfer from an angle, say my wife's found a piece of furniture, and she's like, I really like this, let's rebuild more of them. Another thing might be, uh, say I'm doing like some, some dovetails or something like that. This is a great one for transferring uh, the angles of my dovetails onto whatever it is that I'm gonna be doing. and once in a while I might get sucked into actually doing some carpentry work. And that's where the T-bevel comes in really handy because I can take those angles and then transfer into my saw so I can get a nice tight you know, uh, molding. Well, now did it transfer accurately? Did you check it with your other T-bevels? Right, well yes it did actually. This, this worked out great. Typically what I end up having to do with my other T-bevels is I have a second jig, like usually some sort of protractor or some sort of reference angle kind of a thing, some horrible geometry, so I don't know what the angles are. With this, it's pretty much built right into it because it has that digital readout, so it's telling me exactly what it is. Another thing was with, with the, the blade, I mean the blade is like, it's really sturdy, so I don't have to worry about it bending it while I'm using it. Okay, and so the performance, it performed the way you would like a T-bevel, especially of a digital variety, to yep. perform. Oh yeah, definitely. We are. Okay, well you know what, now we're going to get into the design because okay. it is a little computer, yes. right? And yes, so it is. is it easy to operate? Was it put together thoughtfully? Let's talk about the features. Okay, well there's just the four buttons. There's the power, there's the zero button, mm -hmm. which is where we just simply, we're getting ready to use it. We lock it into position and we put it on our surface. Mm -hmm. We hit the zero button and it's now zeroed out. So I want that 45. Well, once I had it zeroed out and I can now look and say, well, that's not 45 this is, or that's the angle I'm going for. There's my angle right there on the digital readout. Mm -hmm. Uh, one thing I can do is I can then hit the hold button. Now I don't have to worry about accidentally bumping it. I mean, even if I know it's 50 and I'm gonna walk over and put that on my saw, I could do that, knock it out of position. It still keeps it on there so I can re reference it on my other saw. Instead of having to write something down. Exactly, right. yeah, because it's gonna get lost along the way. Mm -hmm. Another neat feature is a flip button. So let's say that rather than looking at the, the angle, say what it's looking at, where mm -hmm. you're looking at it right now, I just hold this down and it then flips the readout for whatever direction I'm looking. Okay. So that way I know exactly where it is. Another one, and this is where, again, where geometry kind of throws me off, they have a reverse button. So if I know that, say that that's 43 degrees, it will then tell me what the opposite of that is. Okay, and so then what about the quality of this? Because again, it is an electronic device. Yep. Is it put together well enough where it's gonna hold up over time? Yes, this one actually, I, I was really kind of surprised because when I look at the body, I'm thinking, oh, that looks kind of plasticky, uh, all that kind of thing. I've had bad luck with plastic ones before. Uh, but be quite honest with you, it's built solid. There's no give and take in this. The blade, like I mentioned, is it's it's pretty thick. So when I'm using it, I don't have to worry about it so breaking down. Right? right, and of course the locking feature, that's a big one. The lock actually locks pretty solid. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a big one. So yeah, quality-wise on, on the construction of it, it's better than what I thought it would be. Okay, and then so the value of this, it's not an expensive tool, but it's money that you're gonna spend on something for your workshop. Yep. Is it worth the dollars? Uh, absolutely. I think if you were going to go in the store and you're going to see them all on the wall, you know, like there's the plastic, there's the rosewood, there's all these things. Mm -hmm. This is one of those that, for the for the value, you might think, oh, this is maybe a little bit on the inexpensive end. Yeah. But what you get from it and the construction of it, it's it should actually be more than what it is. Hey, all right. Well, <laughs> get them while they're hot. Exactly. Yeah. I'll tell you what. It's always nice to know before you go to the store to pick up a tea bevel which one is right for you. And that's why you came to toolselect.com, right? The real stats, the real people, making it real easy to figure out which tool is right for the job. And while you're on the site, do me a favor. 
Become a member, then you can share in your knowledge. Tell us what you know about the T-Bevels. Tell us any power tool that you own, for that matter, because we're all in this together. Toolselect.com.